Hi guys, Dennis here. Uh, just going to show you a little bit about my Bruder converted RC here. Uh, it is, well, some classify it as a D11, but to me it's closer to like a D10 or D9, but uh, as far as scale wise. But um, started this project uh, Sunday night, I dismantled it and then I worked on it for 20 hours straight on Monday. Uh, I got up out here in the shop at 8 o'clock and then uh, worked from 8 o'clock until 4 o'clock Tuesday morning. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> when I get a project started, I usually go from beginning to end, which this is nowhere near done yet, but I got it to the point now where it does uh, runs and moves. Um, got lights on the front and the back. Um, I ended up using two 65 RPM worm gear drive motors. They're the big worm gear drive motors, uh, 12 volt, and I'm powering each one of the <coughs> motors with a Hobby Wing 1060 ESC. So I have two ESCs in here and two of the two of the motors in here. Um, the front I used some 50 millimeter linear actuators. Uh, they're the cheaper Chinese kind, not Optronics, but the cheaper ones. Um, and I have another 1625 Hobby Wing uh, ESC in here powering the up and down of the blade. So that goes up and down. I have plans on maybe putting some 30 millimeter uh, Optronic linear actuators to tip the blade. Um, I haven't spent time with doing the ripper yet. Uh, not sure if I even will. Uh, I like the dozer to be a dozer. Um, I may mount it and get it operational as well. That's the nice thing about it. This you got a lot of room underneath the hood here to put a lot of different stuff and a lot of wiring. At least this model, you have all kinds of room. Uh, I have not put it on a scale yet. I have a layer of lead on the bottom inside the belly, as well as all my uh, the uh, the housings here are completely full of lead. I actually split the housings like you normally do to disassemble the model and then I put a layer of lead shot and some hot glue to kind of hold it in there and I put it on both halves and put it together. You can still take it apart like you normally would. Um, that's the nice thing about it. Uh, what I did to mount the drive sprockets, these uh, motors have got like an 8 millimeter shaft. D style eight millimeter shaft. That's huge. Uh, what I ended up doing was I took a piece of uh, seven eighths aluminum and I drilled it from the end, put a set screw, drilled and tapped for a set screw here to catch the D on the shaft, and then I drilled two holes in the end of them here to uh, bolt the sprocket up, and then I machined this down so it's it's a snug fit inside the factory plastic sprocket. Um, I haven't put this thing, like I said, I haven't put it on a scale yet, but I'll bet you it's pushing close to 10 pounds. Um, if not, maybe just a little bit more. Uh, I may put a little more weight in it yet, but I'm just gonna keep it with the, the plastic uh, factory tracks. Um, if I break a track, I've got a drawer full of them. Um, and you can go and buy them for seven eight dollars for a track so that's fine with me yes putting metal tracks would probably add a little more weight to it as well uh be nice to have a little wider track maybe for a little more flotation a little more traction but um all in all i'm really happy with how it turned out 
uh, I, but like I said, <clears throat> and I've worked on it some today too, uh, on Tuesday here. Um, I finally went to hit, hit the sack about 4 a.m. this morning, and then I got back up at 8 o'clock and started working on it some more to try and get it to this point and get it done. But uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the scale uh, of the, the way the blade goes up and down. It seems to have, it will lift it up. Uh, it hits the stops and it's full stroke at that point. But I do have plans of maybe doing the, the ripper yet, possibly. And then I know one thing I want to do is maybe get the blade tilt. I actually took the factory actuators or cylinders from the factory from Bruder and I actually pinned them in the forward position. Because um, otherwise, when you tried to push or whatnot, it would uh, tend to uh, slip because it, it's just intended to slip back and forth like you play with it as a toy. Uh, I do have it so that I can pull the hood off and this is all wide open in here. Uh, I've got the battery in here, the ESCs, the 10 channel receiver. I went and hooked it up to a Fly Sky i6S which is a 10 channel radio. Most of you are pretty uh, familiar with them and then I put a 10 channel receiver in here. Because I was intending to have, I'm going to need the, the uh, the cylinder operation for here and then there's two sets of cylinders back here um, I just haven't brought myself to, to, to putting that uh, the ripper on yet um, I'll get to it eventually uh, and if I don't that's fine I got a nice big dozer to to go play with um, even if I just get my tilting and my blade um, I still will have several channels left on the radio I probably could have got by doing this with a six channel radio and uh, mixed the drives on one side and then had the blade all operation on the other side. But in the future, if I want to do the blade up and down and the angle of the rear ripper, I should say, uh, I'm going to require more channels. So I figured I had an extra radio and I've got the 10 channel receivers. Um, I figured I'd go this route and actually it works really nice to drive just like you would some of the high priced uh, $3,000 um, units it works really good to uh, use your dials to drive because you can still use your dial to drive and you can still run your blade and everything else so yeah I'm really happy with it. Turned out really good. Um, like I said, I tore this down Sunday night, had it completely in pieces on the bench, and then I had to run all the wiring for the for the strobes and the and the back lights and the all the the rear lights and the corner lights of the cab. I had to run all that wiring, which is kind of nice. This is all hollow in here, so you can run the wiring right down and right right up to the front, which uh, makes it really nice. I do a lot of my cutting when I'm cutting this stuff. Uh, some people use grinders or dremels. I've got a, just a regular razor blade in a vice grip and a propane torch. I warm up the blade and I cut the material out that I need to be cut. Uh, you can spend a lot of time grinding and drilling and whatnot. Just a lot quicker, nicer, and then you can kind of just trim the edges uh, with a hobby knife which uh, works really well so anyway that is my d11 brooder rc conversion um, i'm really happy with it it turned out really well for a short amount of time that i spent on it well i shouldn't say a short amount of time i probably got 30 plus hours in it um, but when i get a project started and i want to start it i try to go from beginning to end I really like starting a project on a Friday evening and work all weekend on a project and get it done by Sunday night. Um, but that doesn't always happen. Uh, you got to have plenty of parts sitting around to do that. And I've had this dozer sitting up on my shelf for probably a year and a half, maybe two years. 
and it's just kind of been sitting there waiting. So I tried to do a little bit of research and get parts on hand that I may or may not need. When I started this, I had no idea how I was going to attach the dry sprockets to those motors. But I was going to use those motors and I was going to make sure I could get them to fit in here. And it, and it worked. And uh, so far, I like it. It's nice and smooth driving. Um, in the scale speed, I see a lot of guys putting the 100, 100, 150 RPM motors in here. Um, a D11 Cat top speed forward is 8 miles an hour. 10 mile an hour in reverse. So they are not very fast. But these motors should have plenty of power for pushing. My biggest, my biggest limit is going to be the tracks, traction, and weight. Um, which I can really put some more weight in this baby yet if I wanted to. But uh, uh, ground's a little bit soggy outside right now. And uh, it'll be frozen here in about an hour. So um, I'd like to go out and play with it. But yeah. That'd be a springtime deal, so. But anyway. And one of the things I do with a lot of these tracks, people, is I will take the time and uh, I'll get a close-up of this. I take the time and take the center bar and uh, I have an end mill and I'll set these tracks up in there and I will grind out that center bar just to give it a little more traction and a little more dirt clearance. The you know the standard three bar uh, cleats uh, tend to just float on top and don't really dig or anything so but uh, anyway I think I've covered pretty much all I want to cover. Um, when I get time, if I get time, um, I will take and go back and uh, maybe list the links to some of the pieces and parts that I used um, and go from there. So for now, I hope uh, they kind of give you, I, I, I tell you what, it's heavy. I love it. <laughs> I got another dozer to play with. Um, uh, catch you guys later.